It's uh, if anyone wants to join the modding team, if you think you're you're up to it, let me know. We've always got uh, always yeah. got spaces for people to do, do things and help out. Somebody uh, okay. just said it in chat. Oh, sorry, you're ready for the game now. We are actually ready to go. All right, let's do it. Cool. Hello everybody and welcome to our last King of the Hill game of the day. Uh, it is week two of 2018 and today has been very much dominated by the player you see in front of your screens right now. That is of course the one and only fearsome Tsar of the Hill, Nagano, playing as the OKW on the northwest of Kolodny Firma. And he's up against somebody in the east. Um... Conversely, on the bottom left of your screen. Thanks, Relic. Um, he hails from Germany, and he's uh, got a Greek name, so much like the British royal family in that sense, a bit of both. It is Theodosios, a master strategist and tactician who uh, likes a long, slow battle to really get into gears and uh, beat his opponent to a bloody pulp. Um, and that is Theodosios. So he's a great competitor. He's always been um, high up in the rankings and... Always get into late stages of tournaments, and notably was Loveness sparring partner for GCS. You already touch on a, an interesting point for this game, which is uh, Theodosius. Is um, he's one of those drawn-out players? He's very reserved. He takes his time. He builds up the the composition that he wants, which means you know with Nagano's playstyle, um, might be in for a long game. Um, but actually, I think where Theo has uh, been weak before is kind of in this starting zone. Uh, if Nagano is very, very good with the early game pressure, we might see Theo crack a little bit early on. Uh, but if it does get into that late game, Theo has every chance of taking this. That's where he's weakest is the early game, Theo. I mean, his micro isn't as good as Nagano's, you could possibly say. I mean, Nag but uh, Nagano might sense that and might try and crack him. But it's not really a golf. It's not a huge difference at all. It's just uh, Nagano is possibly a little tiny bit sharper in that one aspect. Um, so it could be the early game where he tries to crack him. Theo has, however, gone United States Forces, of course, as mentioned, um, which are a great early game faction in themselves. So that might actually uh, paste over those cracks and allow him to weather the OKW storm. Absolutely. Theo has prioritized this... Uh, this quite a strategic house here which denies Nagano his munitions resource. Nagano has been trying to uh, push down onto Theodosius' fuel um, but I think it is Nagano right now who is coming out on top of the early resource game. Uh, he is connected to fuel and munitions. Um, actually Theo's munitions on the south so he's kind of rectified uh, an early game that Theo didn't really want uh, Ooh, Nagano look at this to in the north. Have. Rifle with a very quick retreat because the Stern Pioneers could have caused some heavy damage there. And that means, to be honest, the ambulance is going to have to be at really early out here. That squad's... Oh, God! They had no health. Well, I suppose they're going to be full models coming into the squad now. But, um, yeah, because of that low health, the STGs were able to keep doing the damage. And again, they're going to keep doing the damage to this squad. They're on the rampage, the Sturm Gewehrs. They've been a great game already, actually. Let's have a look at the uh, three kills already at the start of the game. They've done a hell of a lot of uh, pushing from Theo. Um, it's just one of those... Uh, it, nothing really too damaging has happened right now. In fact, they're both going to enjoy similar map control. Um, the real tells start to come. This is nice that we get to see USF. We haven't seen much USF. I think it's been primarily dominated by Soviets as far as the Allies go. So we've been able, we've been treated to some UKF today. We've now got Theo rocking out uh, USF. And uh, he's gone in for the Lieutenant tech. He has. Uh, and Lieutenant's an interesting choice. Obviously, he could be indeed going for the, the half track. No, he's going straight for the M20 utility car. Not often seen that much against OKW. But uh, Theo definitely knows what he's doing. Um, and it's going to be great for harassing. If he can keep away from the Panzerfaust, it'll be a great tool. Um, and when these scout cars are truly at their most powerful is usually on a map with a lot of sight blockers, shot blockers, and avenues and channels to drive down. And uh, if any map represents that fully, it is Kolodny Firma. 
Yeah, something like the M20 is going to be very, very quick. There's also some other benefits to it as well. You've got the vehicle crew with the bazooka, so you can swap that for the, the echelon if you wish, and then get a little bit of extra AT out uh, against that maybe Luke's. No, it's not going to be the Luke's, of course. Battle Grouper is up on the field, so apologize. Um, but I mean, you know, you, you do get flexibility from the M20, and any of the, uh, the M6 anti-tank mines uh, triggered will be devastating for uh, OKW light vehicles. MG34 out for Nagano. He's trying to think what's the best place to put it right now. He's got the Lieutenant capping, capping the munitions or the Rifleman capping the fuel point. And, uh, you know, that's that's not great. It's not great to have an MG out, by the way, against M20. M20 is a natural MG hunter. It's uh, commonly thought of against uh, Wehrmacht as the uh, perfect tool to hunt down an MG42 in the early game. Um, so it's against OKW in this case. However, they have gone for an MG. Um, so the M20 is in a really good strategic position. Good point out in, in uh, chat, by the way. I will point out uh, interesting pieces of analysis or just nice tidbits in chat if you want to tag me. Um, we have 7,400 players online right now, which is a great sign of health for this game series. Of course, we have had a recent sale. We have loads of sales, um, but uh, I mean, five years in and, and 7,400 players, so much more than uh, most other uh, games of a similar vintage and especially of strategy games. It's a really healthy series is coming here as right now. Yeah, it's, it's going through some kind of resurgence with top level players. We we definitely see that uh, the kind of you've got the greats and you've got the, the not so greats that are becoming the greats. You know? um, mm. Who are doing a really good job, and, and uh, that's exactly what we intended to do with King of the Hill. We're breeding one v one players for uh, upcoming events. No, are you suggesting that it's it's nothing to do with the Steam sale? It's nothing to do with the patch? I think we're to thank. Oh, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't... We're, 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 no, we're awesome. <laughs> it's, it's King of the Hill and, and uh, me and you, babe. We, we've single-handedly, we, we are uh, League of Legends. We, I'm sorry, Coming to Heroes, that's the one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag no sellout. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alright, well, Flat Car Track is on the field now. This is a great one, especially when you've got so many little uh, entrances kind of poking out between hedgerows because set far enough back, the Flat Car Track has a great turret rotation speed. It will be able to suppress very, very quickly anything that's coming in to try and flank. And uh, that's a very, very good tool to have in the field. It's going to be relatively okay at keeping M20 at bay. Uh, Theo doing the right thing here, though. He is moving his units left and right. Uh, trying to get maximum time away from that half track and also put pressure on the resources. Nagano still coming out on top, but Theo is about to bring out the AA half track, uh, which is great unit for uh, exactly the same thing as, as OKW has. Really cool that he's gone for the one-two combo there. And the AA half track, by the way, is excellent counter to Panzer tracks because while suppressed, you can't really get your shots off very well. Um, so he's lulled him into a full set of security by going for an abstract choice in the M20, then allowing the follow-up punch strategically the uh, in the build order, the AA half track. And I think that's really cool. It's great play. Um, <laughs> saying that, though, we've got a flak half track against it. So it's a battle of the flak half tracks, Dan. Who's going to win? I... Ooh, it's a tough one, because um, the OKW1 has the kind of escape mechanism. Raketten's a lethal to the A half track of the USF2. Um, this is a nice decap by Theo on the uh, on the fuel cutoff outside Nagano's base. Nagano coming back around with the OKW half track to force off the rest of Theo's army. Now, I just don't think like Theo's had great control here. You see what uh, Nagano's doing? He's hiding behind a lot of green cover. And it's making things like the M20 not so effective. The rifles aren't performing as well as they were previously. So, um... I just saw something so funny on the off map there, Dan. Uh, Theodosios basically reversed as soon as the uh, AA half track was on the field, which caused the AA half track to stop coming on the field. Then it had to try and reverse in the narrow pathway on the on map kind of avenue, if you want to call it. Oh, he's got it's found out the flak half track, causing an instant smoke bomb there concealing smoke utilized so that was one nil to the uh the U united states but yeah it was really funny and it was really far off camera and that's why the uh, american half track took so long to come on the field this is uh i think we were expecting this from this game was that uh we, we said this before theo is kind of weaker in the early game he does kind of come into his own stride later on as the game progresses look at this raquette placement from nagano fortunately misses and his, uh, hits the shed 
and uh, Theo is quick to to notice that and retreat slightly. Uh, but Theo's going to be working his way. He's going to be watching Nagano. He's going to be building up a composition that kind of uh, uh, counters Nagano over time. And uh, have we seen any of the M6 anti-tank mines? Not uh, as of present. The M20 has mostly been a, a harassing unit. Uh, and to be honest, I think it was mostly to, to kind of lull his opponent into a full sense of security to bring as part of an overall composition that's worked well. Nice incendiary grenade. Rocket and Verfa opens up. It's not on target uh, vehicle. It is now. It's, it's made its presence known, though, unfortunately. Oh, Theo is... Uh... As they walk into a bit of a trap here as he gets into the building with the MG. It's got a long setup time now as it's under pressure from Stern Pioneer, MG, and the flat half track. Doing some serious damage uh, to the church. Here comes there. the A half track to try and do some serious damage of its own. But what's it doing? It's facing the wrong way now. Not great play, it must be said. Didn't quite get uh, his units to work the way he intended. And he is going to have to vacate this position, position in short time. Oh! In the nick of time, rather. There you go. Um, interestingly, Dan, just to point quickly on Theodosios, he was possibly expecting Nagano to go Command Panther, hence why he's got heavy cav in his composition and uh, the M26 Bulletin. But Nagano instead has now elected the Luftwaffe Ground Forces. Um, what do you make of that choice? Um, I think this is really good, actually. Uh, the the building pop from... Actually, no, it's not building pop anymore. It's just drop-on, isn't it? Um, yep. Oh, I, I don't know, actually. This is uh, one of these things that, you know, this patch is so new to me. I haven't played as much recently, so I, I'm nice not familiar shot. with what this looks like it's going to lead into. But, um... Russian Jaeger is going to be good at, uh, you know, you'll be able to drop them on a point in the map where he sees uh, Theodosis kind of one unit on its own or maybe drop it behind the MG. It could be very, very, uh, very, very good for that. But he's got such good control at the moment. Um, will he go that King Tiger again? Maybe. One, one thing players need to study is Nagano's control. He's always capping. Uh, he's always positioning and he's always got shift orders, I presume. Uh, doing the work for him in the background. You know, he probably has to execute a very quick tack map uh, shift order, I would expect. And, uh, and that lets it do its thing, and it kind of works itself. Speaking of uh, working for itself, the flak half tracks out on its own right now, just suppressing squads, causing all kinds of damage. Um, does get anti tank rifle grenaded. But um, it's not going to be enough. It's going to be able to reverse away very slowly. Don't forget, a hey, half track is closing Ooh. in. Raketten's there for the defence, and he needs to push up the rifleman to get vision for it. Don't think he will be able to close that. But if Theo decides to give this a go, he could lose the half track here, and that would be devastating. He's well within the Raketten range. There's the he first is, one. and he's gotten shot. He can't get fausted though, and the uh, a half track is going to be safe. Good reaction speed, uh, really good reaction speed there. Both of them, and you could see Nagano is is really focused on the flag half track. He's actually turning it to, uh, you know, suppress different units as they come through various hedgerows. And same for Theo. Theo's just brought out the mortar, which I think is a good choice because obviously Nagano is now occupying these buildings with machine guns. So mortar is the uh, appropriate counter to that. He's got to work great. up through the middle now. Uh, really importantly, Nagano is maxed up strength. Mm. I mean, the, the mortar's decent on uh, Claudine. It doesn't really have the range of the USF mortar there. You have to get it really close up, and then it'll be liable to be flanked by Thalshams and STG uh, folks grenadiers on. So he's got to be careful with it, but it can be a great tool. Also being built, Theodosius has just gotten the Major, uh, possibly going to push to get a Sherman, or something that can really make use of the build. Uh, and of course, Nagano has got the Schwer. Panzer Headquarters on a great position there, one of the most popular positions to put a Schwer in the game, and uh, he's ready to protect his cutoff. Talking about protecting his cutoff, Theodosios has got to do that right now. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. A half track in a great position, not likely to be threatened by the Raketen. Um, so a really nice positioning there. I felt like he was almost expecting Nagano to do that. Nagano's taking this opportunity. I love this. Going over to the uh, the left VP because he knows he's just pulled all of Theo's army into the center. It's a great time to keep that intense VP pressure on that he has been doing. Uh, interesting point. Uh, next to the south munitions point, there is an M6 mine. 
So watch out for that one. It is on a road, so it could detonate later on in the game. Great. And here we go. We've got our first utilage of the Falsham Jaegers. They're going to drop in the north, possibly behind this capping rifleman. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I love that they just fall flat on their backs. Yeah, it was a really bad landing. Oh, are they doing a oh, they're doing a parachute roll, Dan? Did they drop on their feet then fall to their side? No, 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 just literally <laughs> flat on their backs. Like Great spine animation. Spine breaker. <laughs> they got Batista bombs straight from the sky. Fantastic to see. Great animation. This is an interesting pull from Theo um, to get to get away from the Falsham Jaeger. Uh, actually, we see Nagano bringing up the MG there with a close range DPS. That unit is going to have to retreat, no doubt about it. Mortar's just come under threat from the Stern Pioneers. Nagano is still putting a lot of pressure on. And uh, Theodosius, he's desperate to get this VP. Desperate in the middle, maybe he's a major for Major it. mistake there, as he had a major assault in the center and he lost his uh, major because of it. Not a major loss, though, just a major loss. A major loss. For a minor player. <laughs> mm, indeed. <laughs> it's a joke. He's of course not a minor player in any sense of the word. How did this happen in the north? How did... Wait, what? What happened? The riflemen have uh, kicked ass right there. What? They've uh, done, done real great work. Whilst all that was going on in the south, they've um, gotten into a decent position and were plugging away at the Flash Megan. Nagano seems not to have noticed and has had to retreat a little bit late. Could have been a lot worse, but here comes the flat calf track. However, the flat calf track's just about to get eaten up by the M15A1 A8 half track. I can't see it escaping. It does con drop concealing smoke. Raketenwerfer in position. It does escape. That is lucky for Nagano. All well played, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, he's actually played the, the, the half-track gameplay, the light vehicle gameplay so far has been really good. I love seeing the fact that all of those uh, initial tier units are still uh, not only in the game, they're having good roles within the game, do you know what I mean? They're actually laying mines mm. that will benefit them in the late game. They're still putting on area suppression. And Nagano, who was at a triple cap, is slowly losing a lot of territory right now. This is exactly what we expected from Theo to be able to pull back with a nice composition, and he's going to uh, tighten this further with a Sherman. And I'm not 100% I'm not sure about it, because bringing up the Sherman first, means Nagano will get the kind of counter pick for tech. Yeah, I mean Sherman first against two Rukatans and then the counter pick. I think as you say, it's all about opening yourself up for the next strategic layer rather from Nagano. It shows your hand a little bit early. Um, and he's not had great fuel control. So Fox Grenadier just manages to get away from that engagement. Sorry, you continue. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, your testicles descended now. Are you okay? Maybe just take a moment to uh, unpick them. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, oh, that's a very graphic image. Indeed, uh, the Sherman is out, one of the most produced tanks in uh, military history. It's a great vehicle, it's used on every single continent of the uh, Second World War. But of course this is not real life. Just in case you weren't aware. AA Half Track has now again found the flak, but uh, again conceals itself in a shroud of smoke and is able to escape. 420 blaze it to the rescue. Sherman could follow up. Raketenwerfers are mustering. Is it advised? Points are down to 300. I don't think he'll just about get away with that one. Sherman's going to go and uh, take the Falschmjägers off of the left VP. That's nice. There is a squad that can cap that afterwards. They have to get really close to unveil them, and they have done that just now. Turret traverses could be a one could follow up here that was bad by Nagano oh we didn't see it and it was much too late and uh, that game of hide-and-seek ended terribly yeah great great spot from Theo though um, because he really played that one well. and just look at the AA half track usage he's actually got this flying around all the flanks of the map these Vox Grenadiers were trying to get around the back of the MG position on the right VP Theo knows about it he is playing a really, really tight game right now. Uh, we've got the Rakettans, they're just not able to find the sight lines right now. They're, they're on the defensive positioning. Uh, not the same aggression that we saw in the game against Barton. But oh man, the Mortar as well, taking so much health off of the Volksgrenadiers. 
and uh, just allowing the riflemen to tear through uh, Nagano's manpower. And they're doing exactly that, Nagano. Um, you, you wouldn't really say he's struggling because he was in such a strong position before those uh, transgressions just now. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's um, he's had some food for thought delivered by uh, our humble chef Theodosios there, and um, it's made it into a very interesting situation. We're now just hitting the twenty-minute mark. Both players are, you know, of similar victory points—a hundred difference there—but uh, they have a healthy amount. Um, they've got similar strategic outlook. It's just that Theodosius has more material. He has 80 popcap utilized. Well, he's about to get the Panzer IV, so it now becomes 67. But uh, it is a small difference there, only. Nagano is putting a lot of pressure on the right-hand side right now. This is difficult because Sherman is in the center. If Nagano pulls everything too far onto that northern side, uh, that Sherman could go in for the kill. Um, and be very, very potent there. A half track, good responses getting away from the Raketan. Look at the suppression from the MG there, pitting multiple squads and, oh, and oh, oh, killing the Raketan. Nice. Big problems here. Another M6 uh, anti tank mine lies on the road if that Panzer IV pushes. So Theo also this locking is such himself. a great push. Hey, look at the bars now, they tore up the MG. And they could have gotten a squad wipe there. That was such an expert push by Theodos. This is exactly what we talked about when we introduced him at the start of the game. He's a tactical and strategic master. He's not a great, super duper aggressive, amazing micro push player like a Von Ivan kind of figure or a Dev M. No, he's he's much more a slow build um, artist of, um, of strategy. And it's exactly what he's done so far. I just really respect that he is defending himself. Whenever he gets these uh, map gains where he's a little bit further ahead, he's he's then laying the M6, uh, the M6 mines, or he's just putting something down that is going to further stunt Nagano. And it's those little things that tip engagements constantly, and, and uh, that's why Theodosius is in the position he's in right now. Um, how he deals with all this arm on the right hand side, I don't know, uh, but it's clear that Nagano is. Uh, He's feeling pressured. It is. A bazooka rounds bounce harmlessly off the Panzer IV. It was well intended by Theo. And uh, Nagano's done a lot of work today, and I'm sure he wanted to uh, to retire after today to his um, Kremlin. I can't think of a better word. And, uh, you know, just, just look upon his empire of wins and uh, be preparing for next weekend. But instead, he's in a difficult game against something he wasn't expect somebody he wasn't expecting, and that's Theo. And uh, it's really brutal. Now he finds himself in this situation. It's his fourth game of the day. Or maybe fifth? Is it fourth or fifth down? Something like that. Um, I think this will be game five. For Nagano. Is yeah. That... Yeah. Wow. This will be, a... this will be his fifth. Uh... So he's certainly got possibly a little tiny bit fatigued now, must be said. But uh, he is a battle hardened veteran of the Coming Heroes tournament scene, which means he is capable of playing all day at a high level. Yeah, it's one of the things that King of the Hill, the brakes aren't that big, you know what I mean? Uh, you are playing games at the top level for such a consistent game. Against different uh, opponents as well, I mean, in the best of three or five series, you're up against the same guy, you get a feel for him. And it can be fatiguing to really just try and analyse the composition and the playstyle of your opponent and, and adapt, you know. You have to be versatile to be King of the Hill, and uh, it, today's an excellent example of just that. Well. Theodosius is uh, 750 manpower on the float at the moment. He seems to be saving for something. Can, I can kind of understand. He doesn't need to push anything right now. He's coming up to the top of his population cap, so might want to slow down building things for the sake of it. Uh, he hasn't put himself into the Jackson yet, which makes me think we will see a Pershing, and that is what it's being backed for. Um, that's going to be a, a great, great unit to have um, with everything else he's got on the field right now. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I suppose Nagano does have a lot of fuel, though. And if he was to go, he's not going to have the chance to go mechanized and get King Tiger out with it to have great effect. All I was going to say is the Pershing is a heavy tank. However, it's a generalist heavy tank. It's like a squad wiping machine that can go up against medium tanks. And there is a Panther, indeed, in the build for Nagano, a traditional Schwerpanzer Italian headquarters Panther. Um, so, to be honest... 
Pershing versus Panther is a pretty fair battle. It's, it's not the heavy tank that can just go toe to toe with any tank and win. Uh, a Panther more, can more than outmatch it, especially with the veterancy. So this could be a really good strategic choice for Nagano. Theodosis just pushing off the MG on the right VP there. Nice little support play to uh, remove the support weapons there. You can see Nagano responds immediately, bringing over the OKW half track. It is unsupported though, which is a little dangerous. And that's pulled Nagano's army from the center. Theodosis immediately springs into action for a triple cap, which he might be able to get. Oh, so he's gotten a Rakenvo for shot off. On the Vet 3A to half track, he's jumping in there with the Panzer IV, but he could fall foul of the M6 mine. He was just threatened enough by the rear echelons not to worry about it, and uh, is indeed reversing away. You can hear a rumbling. The Panther is on the battlefield now, on the prowl. I think Theo's trying to lead Nagano's Panzer IV over this M6. Yeah, I can't quite tell. He seems to be retreating from those engagements. Sherman comes down to clear the Volks Grenadiers off the uh, bottom left VP. Uh, Nagano it just seems to be struggling for, for just one VP to just you know, dampen uh, the pressure that is coming on from, from not having VP control right now. Theo is just playing a great job. And here it is. I mean, the M6 mine has gone off, though, with a lot of health damage. And that, by the way, is immobilized critical on the Panther. It's a sitting duck. It's a glorified turret. It's a defensive position. We've also got a damaged engine, a Panzer IV. But, uh, and we've just had the Pershing hit the field. The General's here, the General of Destruction. Yep, there we go. Pershing should be able to wipe this immediately. No chance of Nagano getting out of there. Uh, a great... <laughs> a great and fortunate timing play from Theodosius. Oh, Although that Panther's still standing. Still standing. We've also got the Stukas raining hellfire from above. The Pershing now indeed is destroyed thanks to a, a cheeky little escapade from the Sherman getting the kill. He's still got a Panzer IV. It's not situation critical quite yet. He's got 70 fuel remaining, so don't think it's GG quite yet. But this Pershing certainly is going to have a hell of a window of opposition now. Absolutely. That's so cool to see, you know, that, that something like the M20 can actually still contribute to destroying the late game vehicles. I love oh, that that's been. Oh, look at that. It's, oh, both shots missed. That was really lucky for the uh, Panzer IV. Rakette and Werfers do get a good shot in. And there's the Panzer Shreks here actually threatening a squad wipe. Though the Pershing, he thinks about it, Nagano, and then he realizes the squad wipe was coming in from the Pershing. You don't want to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh, there was one in the middle there. <laughs> God, from the flak, pan, uh, the flak half track. Wow, Dan, what a game. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, Theo's still making use of that uh, Lieutenant Tech unit, the M20. He's going to be getting out to cap the VP whilst repairing. Nagano manages to cling on to the center VP um, also with his light vehicle, but the loss of that Panther surely spells big trouble uh, oh, it's for huge. Nagano here. He is not even getting the resources to bring that back in for minutes and minutes worth of time. Theo's already, uh, in a sense, outplaying him already, so this is a, this is a really on the back foot for Nagano right now. Classic Theo, he's uh, strategically outplayed his opponents over time. It was no one specific moment, I mean the Pershing killing the Panther then was, well the Sherman rather killing the Panther then was great. Interesting tidbit, the first vehicle to die at uh, 26 minutes in was a Panther. And we've got a hell of a lot of vehicles on the battlefield. Well pointed out by Pompey and chat there. Uh, and that's just a hallmark of a cracking game. And uh, a very exciting and strategically pleasing game. It certainly has been a, uh, an interesting one. I would say for most of the day, we've had very good games to cast. Uh, mm. used to yeah, the first two were a bit quick, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we've had about three great ones in a row now, it must be said. So... Uh, you, you forget those first few skirmishes that lost, lasted 20 minutes because we've had some belters, certainly, now. And the Pershing's just rampaging around the battlefield with its GCS um, tanks adorning its skin. I don't know what that Panzer Mont Ford's thinking because it's getting into difficult territories. Wow, I, I... 
really questioning whether Nagano has anything uh, capable of stopping this right now. Even the Rakettans are just so overstretched because they are uh, oh, you know, forced to specific areas of the map. Jagdpanzer 4, great choice. Exactly, he answered your question mid-sentence there, Dan. Uh, Jagdpanzer 4 is going to come on the battlefield. And it is the obvious and only choice he has right now. The only option, really. Um, but it is a glass cannon vehicle. It's very easy to flank. A lot of mobility in Theodosios' army right now. Um, how is it going to play out? I think if he really, really uh, supports it, it can be a great unit. Once, of course, it picks up veterancy and you start getting like, camouflage on it as well, it can be a real uh, difficult one to contend with. And it will at least uh, scare Theodosius into not pushing so far. Um, I think one thing we noticed with Theodosius before is that he was not as confident with pushing. You know what I mean when those game yep. moments came up? And that's something Nagano does do. So maybe Theodosius will use his cool a little bit once that comes in the field. Um, but I it's think it's a, a really good choice. The one thing that separates Theodosios from uh, being an extremely capable tournament veteran to a historical and prestigious tournament winner, which I don't believe he's ever actually won a tournament, is that killing instinct. He he does seem to get to top pop cap and try and strangle out a game. He won't do the love nest or the helping hands esque maneuver of being, yeah, defensive, but making the killing blow when he needs to. He does not seem to have the jugular instinct that will separate him out from the pack when he gains it. And it is something you can gain. Look at this battering ram slugfest there. I really like that. Both of them trying to ground attack each other through the hedgerow. I think the Egg Panzer 4 came out on top because it did a significant amount of damage to the Pershing. And, and this is what I was saying, this is probably where Theo might get a little scared. But look at the response, the M20, the echelons come back, hop out of the vehicle, everything's on the repairs immediately to get that back. Whereas Nagano doesn't have that, he's just got the uh, the Stern Pioneers out at the moment. So this is a very favourable to Theo, if he can keep maintaining his vehicles with this efficiency, uh, he'll just be able to just steamroll over Nagano when he's weak. Yeah, but what's the uh, the health bar on the Jagdpanzer? <laughs> it'll, like, it'll be 100% within half a minute. Honestly, uh, OKW repair times due to them having that elite kind of troop that is so... Oh god, he's going forward, by the way. He's really thinking this game's going to last a distance, and I have every feeling it will do. We're probably in for an hour-long classic here. Um, he's going for the mechanized because he probably wants the Koenigstiger. It'll be something like that, won't it? Either that or I'll just want the vehicle repairs. Uh, here comes another Falschenjäger with aerial support. Uh, there's two Shermans waiting in the wings for this with a shot from the Pershing. Shermans try to charge round the back of the church. They will avoid the Rakettans if they do this. So this is all or nothing. He has to make that choice and I think he is chosen to dive. Dive, dive, dive is the call of the U-boat commander as he rushes headlong into a Jagdpanzer. And this is exactly why... Uh, Theo's probably going to tell himself never again as he's losing another Sherman to a very plucky Panzerfaust careering into that rock there. So he lambasted Theo for lack of aggression. <laughs> then he shows <laughs> just why he doesn't do it very often. Oh god, oh, stick to what you know, Theo. That was horrible. <laughs> Yeah, it was such a careful, calculated game up until that moment. That was not the right time to push. And what a huge loss of fuel as well. Uh, 220 fuel lost in that engagement uh, is, is devastating. <laughs> Nagano suddenly looks like he has a little bit of a, a, a route back with a Panzer IV and a Jag Panzer IV against the Pershing. Oh, oh what a squad wipe! An exclamation mark on that passage of play. And uh, that exclamation mark is a kind of swear for a moment, Dan, a, a medium level swear word. Please. <laughs> Comes at the end of a word just simply quoted from Theo, Scheisse. And uh, that's exactly what's just happened. Um, it's not gone well for him. And to understand, it reminds me of like a Monty Python-esque uh, sketch at the careers office. So Theo, what do you want to be? I want to be a lion tamer. Well, we just don't think you're aggressive enough to be a lion tamer. Um, you know, here's a lion, show us what you've got. Okay. <laughs> and he does it, and he gets maimed horribly. It's like, no, stick to being uh, a strategic player. Stick with uh, the penguins. <laughs> the penguins. The penguins are lovely, Theo. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, oh, what a difficult situation. Uh, there is a lack of AT. I wonder if we could get an, uh, an AT gun to kind of stunt the Agpanzer 4. 
and get some veterans here on that, kind of utilize the range. The Pershing is not doing that great anymore. Oh, but he does wipe out the Vet 4 on the uh, on the Raketan, which is very, very useful. Uh, that Pershing is suffering so much at those Raketans. Really, really tough game for Theo. It, it really has been. Um, I mean, let's not you know, count Theo out yet. He has 270 victory points, 35 minutes again against a weir battle weary. Uh, fifth game opponent here. He's still got the Pershing, but the Jagdpanzer's coming in for the kill. Main gun destroyed. One more shot required by the hunting casemate tank destroyer. Can't do the damage. Will instead turn his <laughs> sights. Oh, don't know what blew up the M6 anti-tank mine then, but it actually killed a lot of Theo's models. Uh, he's lost the M20. He's lost the MG. Pershing has no health. Only have this A half track. He is bringing out the Jackson, which I don't mind as an idea. No, it's a great choice, and that could be the difference between having to throw in the towel and um, using the towel to mop the blood off your face and going in for another round of action. And I'm glad he's going for the latter in this case. Gosh. Well, it just goes to show you how things can turn so quickly uh, in Company Heroes. It's kind of worth, uh, as a point just mentioning this now, it's worth sticking around in games that you're pushed back in because a lot of people would have raged at a number of things, especially losing that Panther. Um, if you're the kind of person you think you would have rage quit at that point, this is a clear example of how you, you can win and you can push back. Um, and it is worth staying in games. You end up, actually end up with some incredible games, as this one is turning out to be, uh, and will be, as we welcome... Jim the Jackson, Jackson. is now Dan's choice of naming the Jackson once again. We're using members of the Jackson family. That's Michael, Tito, Jermaine, Jackie, Randy, or Marlon. Last week it was Jackie. Who are you going for this week, no, Dan? Is the Janet. Panzer Fours about? Janet, yeah. you went for. Oh, the Panzer Four Vet Five just got a killing blow on the AA half track that had been for life for so long. But the Jackson now firing through the hedgerow against the engine immobilized Panzer IV, M6 mine to the rescue, Jackson to the rescue, and uh, sorry Dan, what was his name? Uh, I'm going to go with Tito on this one actually, I think. Tito. Can I just say, M6 mine again, which had triggered the uh, immobilization on that Panzer IV, it's a huge, uh, they've been such a big benefit in this game, Theo now after all of what we've, what we've just said still holds a pretty decent chance of, uh, of holding the game, doing huge AoE damage with the Pershing, uh, the yeah, Panzer IV <laughs> is not... Did you see that Pershing shot with a squad wipe then? This I'm, has gone I'm watching from, it. This has gone from literally, assuming at least Theodosios on the ropes, to RNG bombs to the rescue, M6 mines to the rescue, Jackson firing through the hedgerow to an amazing effect. And uh, this game's well and truly well into the open again. It's got equal engagements all over the shop, back and forth, to and fro, here and there action. Smoke bombs concealing the <laughs> Pershing Vet 3. Got to keep that thing oh, alive. That was Nagano, I think. Nagano. Was it? Uh, yeah, Nagano had the smoke uh, okay. bombing run. I think, I think he was trying yeah. to stop his Raketan from being destroyed because uh, Theo was attack moving the, uh, the Raketans. Uh, I think he wanted to protect them. Uh, don't forget, by the way, as, as, as bad as that was for Nagano, he still holds a triple cap at the moment, uh, which is starting to really work against, uh, against Theo. You so see what he's going for, quick. by the way, now. He's, uh, he's, gone, he's got the Vet 2 Jagdpanzer. He's rebuilding his second Raketenwerfer. He's going to be waiting for 310 fuel. It's absolutely assured at this point. Um, he currently has a triple cap, so he can afford to do that. He's currently winning the VP battle. Um, so we are going to be seeing King Tiger versus Pershing and Jackson. So King Tiger and Jagdpanzer versus Pershing and Jackson. So... Um, I think chat, I want to see some uh, good hype in there for um, Tank Bowl 2018, hashtag if you will. Or okay. someone could lose really quickly. Yeah, that's, that's possible. I mean, we've seen that happen so far. Uh, things have happened unexpectedly and violently in this game. Um, luckily for us and the viewers, it has happened one apiece for each of the two players. We've had two. Uh, well, two or three excellent uh, ascendancies and, and associated descendancies, but uh, this Pershing can really change things. I mean, oh, that could have been a squad wipe, you know. It yeah, wasn't absolutely. medium cover, that could have been a squad wipe. I think he's going for the chase as well. Nothing to be stopping there. Um, Pershing is just so fast, and again, it's one of the perfect units as a heavy for this map just because of that speed and because of the, the acceleration. 
uh, you get from Veteran C. It's a great unit for just patrolling. Um, Theo needs to be careful though because he is pushing oh, these the very limits. units pushing to the rescue. Oh, that could have been so much worse. It was actually a yellow cover crater coming to the rescue that time. Oh, but the second shot nearly kills them on retreat. Yeah. Heinous assault. This Pershing is brutal. 17 infantry killed so far. The Jacksons obviously got the one vehicle kill. They're an excellent tag team of destruction. Yeah, you really do have to say that the Agpanzer 4. Oh, 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 pick off from the Pershing. The so squad pushing. white machine, the Terminator unit. And we've got a Desperation Airborne Assault of all things. So that Stuka's followed up with Falsham Jaegers. Herman Goering to the rescue. He's finished off uh, cavorting with boys on an island and uh, he's now flying a Stuka. <laughs> yeah, hey, what I was saying before, the Jagdpanzer 4 I think was a really good choice for this because it is just picking off so many long range you know, shots. They're, they're good accuracy, good penetration each time. Uh, it's just such a shame he hasn't got the support for it now. The Jackson is helping to keep it off uh, and at bay as well. Nagano, as you say, I think is, is saving up. Uh, for this, uh, this juggernaut to come on the field and maybe just be bait, you know what I mean? Maybe just uh, maybe just take a lot of hits whilst the Agpanzer 4 does some serious work. Uh, but I'm just not sure Nagano actually has the infantry army anymore to hold off what Theo's fielding. I think I think you, um, you have a point there. I, I do think that Nagano's got an excellent victory point lead, though. So I think this game's still got legs. We're going to see things last for a lot longer, which allows Nagano the opportunity to rebuild his forces. Um, I've just been reliably informed, by the way, that the, uh, <laughs> the airborne assault is now an anti-tank and anti-infantry strafe, which makes up for the lack of free... Nice, Mr. Pershing. Thank you. Please stop killing everything. Uh, lack, lack of free Falsham Jaegers, so my bad there. I am a, um, a noob, seemingly. I don't think anyone can blame you so much has changed. It changed so quickly as well. There's a, like talk of a new patch coming as well, and I'm just like, I'm great at shouting about games. I'm not so great at uh, taking times out of my busy life to learn everything. Oh well. <laughs> Another great. Engagement coming up here. Pershing is just clearing all the infantry off the center. The Agpanzer comes in. That's the time where the Jackson leans in for a bit of support. Oh. Another squad wipers and MG goes down to the Pershing. And the weapon died. Oh. That was actually the uh, mortar that got that one, I think. It's up to 24 kills now. I mean, um, the mortar, the Pershing. Oh my god, 24 and 27 between them. Yeah, P Pershing has to be MVP here, absolutely. Um, he's using it very well. It's constantly just picking a channel of attack. It's uh, trading with the Jagdpanzer IV. The Jagdpanzer IV is obviously getting fed veterancy, so it will be getting stronger and stronger uh, over time. And if we do see the King Tiger, it will be a very good complement with this kind of veterancy. Uh, but I just it's time is ticking away. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure where this game is going. I, I can't actually call it right now. I think both players have had the tremendous, tremendously bad things. Well, to them. allow me to explain where I think this one's going. It's going to be a true test of ultimate metal as we get into the later stages of this game, and it's no longer about build order choices. It's no longer about divine strategic operations. It's going to be about who's got the balls to carry this one forward and um, put in the finishing blows on their opponents. Jagdpanzer in a difficult position. It's got some heavy bombs in right now. It's reversing away the Pershing in heavy assault as one thing rumbles in the distance. It's the Gorilla Unchained. The King Tiger, the Königstiger is on the field. 68 and a half tons of quantified destruction to quote myself and uh, it's going to be an interesting one. But also down we've got the Jackson about to hit. So we have excellent parity maintained and Theo, who's wiping squads left, right, and centre, north, south, west, and east, and centre. Um, it's going to be difficult for this King Tiger to make the difference, in my opinion. And uh, Nagano, as you rightly mentioned, is in a bit of a pickle right now. It is difficult. He needs to be very, very careful as well, because he's already lost health in the King Tiger. That is a squad with an 18 aid very close to him. 
Uh, we have our new Jackson on the field. So there's, there's a lot of frontal armor penetration uh, from Theo, which is going to be rising up. I think the 18-8 has just gone off from Theodosis. So these two Jacksons now have a great opportunity. Oh, it doesn't pop, though. We no, spent the resources on it. Um, not sure what happened there. The King Tiger has had some big shots in from the Jackson. So it's two Jacksons and a Pershing. He's also, of course, got uh, Bazooka rear echelons. He's got an, two riflemen with snares. Um, so let's face it, this King Tiger is going to be largely inadequate unless the Jagdpanzer can do some incredible shots from Cloak. Um, maybe, you know, and uh, work in unison because he doesn't have the Faust platform anymore, Dan. He can't get Foats Grenadiers in position to really help a tank push because they no longer exist. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Rear echelon getting really cheeky. Yeah, I think he was trying Spot to go for there. the bazooka pickup and, uh, and didn't want to finish that. One thing I am interested in, Theo is not even attempting the north side of the map right now. He's very, very focused. I think this might be a fear thing. Um, but they're constantly just trying to outmatch each other in the central engagement. Neither player really going for the wings anymore. And uh, Nagano now has a squad wiping machine of his own. A little bit slower, but equally as strong. Oh, gosh, Mortar wiping the Raken. Oh. Taking some uh, stone finding units with it. What are these echelons doing? That is the Mortar's 28th kill there. Pershing's got a hell of a lot of damage to it. It's got 35 kills. The Jackson's now in the center, keeping the... Oh, God, he's going for it. Theo is feeling it. He's getting aggressive. He knows the King Tiger's at bay. He's pushing up with the rear echelons who are becoming frontal echelons and now are retreating back to base. And uh, you know what, Dan? He thinks he's won this. Do you think he feels the pressure of 600... Uh, sorry, 1,200 eyes watching him? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I don't know how the players are reacting, because it's not like a standard tournament format. I don't know if there's so much pressure as they usually would be, but... Um, I don't know. This is that point in the game. I don't think Theo is, is confident enough to push here. He could easily win this. We know it. Easily. Uh, he's got the penetration. He's got, like, squad wiping machines left, right, and center. He could be pushing even for the munitions, but he is really not wanting Nagano to push out this one territory outside of his base and I, I do think it's one of those things of being a top player uh, you have a fear factor and I just think why is Theo retreating here why is he on the on it's, the on the turnaround to be honest I've got to be a hundred percent honest it's one of the reasons that uh, I look forward to watching Theo's games but uh, I do have reservations watching them as well because I know he doesn't have that killing um, blows sometimes. And to be honest, it's now allowed Nagano to rebuild two Folks Grenadiers in the time he has spent not closing this game out, trying to finish off the King Tiger with his two Jacksons and Bet3 Pershing and uh, snare platforms. He could have gotten in there, gotten an angle on it maybe. Um, uh, maybe don't use smoke from the mortar to keep the Jagd Panzer at bay whilst dropping smoke from the off-map smoke barrage. It's just one of those things, you know. Uh, I mean, it's easy for me to say that. It's so difficult when you're playing the game. you got so many viewers saying that the Jacksons just have now found the King Tiger. The Pershing is going to try and flank it. Oh. Yeah, Pershing. Uh, a good move for the Pershing there to try and get up. The Raket hasn't turned to meet that threat yet. Uh, interestingly, though, the Jackson took loads of health from the Yak Panzer 4, so that... That kind of unit, he's he's trying to stealth up the map to get these Jacksons and do a very, very good job of it. Uh, a shame that the Raketan didn't fire a last shot in that engagement. And um, yeah, Nagano just has to be really careful, keep what he has uh, alive, and he, he can come back into this. He really uh, but can. I am, I'm wondering what his second... Well, sorry, what his third vehicle is. It's not even his third, it's his fourth vehicle. <laughs> yes, uh, well, well, I'm thinking I mean, of his second big tank. You know, he's got a great... Uh, God knows. But um, anyway, I'm thinking what his next vehicle choice is going to be because um, he needs something that's going to be able to counter the Jacksons. And uh, I think it may be another Yak Panzer IV. Can he get that on his, on his pop cap? He certainly can. Uh, obviously, he's in a VP battle situation now. So all these tanks are great, yeah. I mean... They are very important things, uh, very strategic to try and take them out and get yourself uh, an advantage. 
And the Pershing is certainly the thing that's stopping him from taking victory points right now. So well, usually I would try and say at this point, yeah, it's not all about tanks when it comes to victory point battle. But with the Pershing on the field, Vet 3 down, it really is. Because you just can't take victory points with the Pershing on the field. It'll squad wipe you. It'll cause you to not even be able to get out of your pocket of resistance. And that's why the meta in this game right now is all about the heavy tanks. Oh, this is a good spot for uh, Nagano. He's trying to push in and uh, chase the Jackson down, which is currently rear armor facing. Big Panzer Ford being very, very ballsy here. And uh, yeah, taking a ball. huge amount of damage from the Jacksons on retreat. Oh. The airplanes come in as well. They might get some killing blows. They've actually stalled the Jacksons. One they more have. plane hit could oh. take that down. Couldn't quite get it. However, the uh, fighting position at least was taken out, allowing the Fox Grenadiers to push in. Here comes the Pershing, though. King Tiger with its uh, beautiful Henschel turret is now traversing ever so slowly. Is getting shot at by the remaining Jackson in the picture. And it's just allowed him just enough time to cap the central victory point. And in the north, by the way, the MG34 and flank off track have it so um, Nagano with an excellent tactical play there was able to get into position push away what he needed to push away and cap that victory point the big issue though is that he doesn't have anything really to defend uh, this central VP so I don't know is uh, Nagano I think is gonna really struggle here this uh, this MG and the half track on that side eh? Surely yeah, one true. of them could provide suppression in the centre. Completely agree. Yeah, it's one of those things you just don't see until you watch the cast back uh, later on. Um, you're like, oh, why did I have both suppressive units in the north? But uh, to be honest, the flak half trap probably wouldn't survive very long in the middle, so he, he might as well bring the MG down and uh, put it there instead. We do have a panther in the build, and that is just in recognition of, even though we're 110 victory points to 90, as mentioned earlier, this is all about the tanks right now, and he needs to try and counter them. If he can't, he's lost the game. Vet 5 Jagdpanzer 4 just Ooh. flicks on there with a hit from the uh, from the Pershing. Needs to be careful because there are snaring riflemen available on the VP. Um, this is causing trouble for the Ag Panzer 4 whenever it wants to go in. We see Jackson's on the left-hand side. Will they be looking to flank? Contact! Ooh, that is interesting. That is really interesting. The King Tiger is pushing into the center, possibly overextending. You class it as that, but uh, they are frontal um, hits there. They, they barely scratch the paintwork and, uh, of the Zimmit. So uh, Theodosius, by the way, is on the illustrious 101 Popcat, currently uh, taking vehicle crews out uh, and um, to replenish his squads, etc., which is a feature of the United States. Panther on the field. Nagano is now up to 90 Popcat. So despite uh, not having much infantry done, he certainly has uh, a large army value. And uh, he's going to have to act fast, think faster, and uh, be decisive on the battlefield to really... You know, close this game out, and the Panther might be the missing piece of the puzzle for him. Yeah, you know, the Panther is currently in a in a flanking position. It's ready to catch the Jacksons off guard. He might be looking to pull Theo through the centre VP. He's got the half track back down in the centre now. He's realised that he could be using that to get rid of all these riflemen pushing up. And uh, this is really interesting because if those Jacksons do come up too far, they'll have a great position. Oh flanking. God! Crouching Panther. Tigers the base. Will the Panther rush into action now? This is a great tactical play by Nagano. It will indeed. Rear armor penetrated. Meanwhile, the Vet 5 Jagdpanzer is in a perfect position to contest the middle. This would be a fair fight if it wasn't for the covert operation Panther. Oh, oh God. God. Meanwhile, out of control. Jacksons and Panther. Reign supreme. King Tiger down. Jagdpanzer down. The Panther couldn't get any kills in, Dan. <laughs> It was such a lovely setup for a really, really nice play. It would have been great if he'd had air support with that, but uh, losing those units, such high firepower intensity from the Jacksons, means that we will have a new king. And uh, I think AE, we had a great pick with Theo playing against Nagano today. We really did. And uh, that, uh, I was so concentrated on that Panther, I thought it was really one of the coolest things I ever saw. And then I flicked my camera just about 20 pixels north 
and the King Tiger exploded, and then the Jagdpanzer exploded. I was like, ah. <laughs> oh poo. <laughs> it's not the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's just a really great play from Theo. He had all the veterans he lined up, and he was in a killing match, and he seemed to shrug off the Panther. And uh, yeah. Nagano, the saw, is dead. Wow, what a dethrone. That was such a long game. I have to say, it got lulled at times. But um, the finish was absolutely fantastic and, and well worth the wait for some excellent tank play. GG Theodosius, the new king of the hill. All right, well, that brings us to the end of our second week. Uh, a, what do you think about the games today? Yeah, great. A uh, bit of a crap start, but ended fantastically with a great climax, climactic game there. And we got to see um, the coronation, rain, and um, execution of Nagano there. So it was a really cool story we got to tell. Absolutely, yeah. Good games all around, as I say, start ones. Uh, yeah, maybe... Maybe have a little bit to work on there. Turning up drunk to your tournament games, Von Omen. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as for the others, really great games. And, and a huge uh, a huge thank you to everybody who is uh, practicing 1v1 really hard at the moment, putting out mm. new strategies, new skills. As Loveness said, uh, every game you step into at the moment has no fixed meta. You don't know what you're going to be playing against. Um, it is a really, really cool time to be playing and watching Company of Heroes. So good Good job guys thanks for putting on uh, amazing games time after time uh, it's a pleasure hosting this event for you guys to showcase yourselves uh, a do you have something you need to be uh so you can't keep blaming me for ending the show every week it's a four hour <laughs> show and you really can't keep doing that um it, you it, if you want to catch any of today's games it's on youtube.com forward slash aecoh otherwise catch us next week right here on twitch.tv forward slash stormless uh, it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, great seeing some fantastic games. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you for organizing this. Stormless. No problem at all. Um, all right then, I guess that's the end of the stream. Thanks again, guys. We hope you enjoyed this weekly event. Do like, uh, like, this isn't YouTube. Do like <laughs> and subscribe to AE uh, and do follow me on Twitch if, uh, if you're enjoying it. So uh, see you guys next week. Um, so at the moment, we'll say 2 p.m. AE. But uh, we say maybe the time. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you. It's up to you, mate. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check out the time next week. We're not one hundred percent sure if we're going to knock it back an hour. Uh, so do keep your eyes open. But it'll be around the same time is, is what we can efficiently say there. But uh, all right, ta-ra, guys. See you later. Bye bye.